With over 80 years of colorful history, Harkins Theaters is one of the Southwest's leading entertainment companies based right here in Arizona. Talk about American made. Hey boys, let's land. And that's the big film hitting Harkins Theaters this weekend. Coming up, Tom Cruise shows off that famous smile and his piloting skills. <clears throat> Have we finished? Plus, we'd better keep this half hour interesting or else the queen may not off. Oscar winner Judi Dench is back in a role she could do in her sleep. Okay, now's the point where you say it's all a joke. And no Julia Roberts in this one, Ellen Page wants to die. Well, at least for a few minutes, in Flatliners. But we'll breathe some life into this next half hour as Real Travels takes you to London, Toronto, the emergency room, and right back here to Harkins Camel View. Welcome to Real Travels with Tara Hitchcock. I'm Tara Hitchcock, attempting to combine my love of travel and seeing movies. And it's only fitting that our very first show would be right here at my home away from home, a Harkins movie theater, specifically the Harkins Camel View. With over 30 theaters in five states, it's easy to forget Harkins is based right here in Arizona, and they have been providing more than just entertainment and great popcorn to moviegoers over the years. So for the next 30 minutes, sit back, grab some popcorn if you have it, and get ready to enjoy a look at some of my celebrity interviews. And of course, we'll involve some friends and lots of popcorn along the way. And let's begin with the big film opening this weekend at Harkins Theaters, American Made. Welcome to Miami. Welcome to Bakersfield. Haven't you ever wanted something more, Barry? Top of your class in the Civil Air Patrol, youngest pilot in PWA history. It's been over 30 years since Tom Cruise took to the skies in Top Gun. The actor is back in the cockpit in American Made, playing Barry Seal, a former airline pilot turned drug smuggler turned informant who ended up embroiled in the Iran-Contra scandal. With their moments where you just sit there going, what, are you serious? Like this... It's just, it really is unbelievable. I don't condone the things that he did, but you, you see it and there's some, you can't help it. There's this uh, wish fulfillment, you know, someone who lived beyond the rules in a way that you, that was very unique to that time period. I don't work for TWA no more. Are you going to prison? I grew up in the South, and mm -hmm. so I grew up around, you know, these wonderfully strong Southern women, and it was, um, it, you know, it was amazing to be able to sort of harness some of that and, you know, put that into this character. I need a fridge. I need beds for our children. I need a stove. Washing machine over there. Let me just... You've got money coming out of right. every room. You're asking for a stove, and yeah. you're asking for a refrigerator. You're not asking for minks and diamonds and jewelry. When you first got your, you know, the, the biggest paycheck to date that you'd <laughs> received, what was yes. the thing that you went out and got? I think I paid off my car. I had been, for real, living off of the tiny uh, 25 cent ramen noodle packages <laughs> yeah. um, in living in Chicago. And so the moment I got that first check, I was like, oh my gosh, first of all, I can pay everything <laughs> off, which was great. And I'm not gonna have to eat ramen, you know, five nights a week. So that's really wonderful <laughs> too. <laughs> Although, come on, you miss ramen a little. I mean, let's be honest. Yes, I do. I mean, and occasionally do I open yeah. up a package and make it happen? Maybe. Sure. Right. Sure. You get the right spices, and all of a sudden, it's like an Indian curry dish. It's pretty incredible. Right. I'll load the ground you want me. Tom Cruise isn't the only pilot here, so is director Doug Lyman, and the two ended up camping together in the Colombian jungle to get some cool shots. If I'm spending a night in a tent with Tom Cruise, and you apparently spent several, yeah. what am I learning about him? Is he a snorer? 
Does he tell stories? Is he a good bunkmate in the jungle? He's quite a good bunkmate. It's hard to find anything that Tom Cruise isn't good at. We not only made the film together, we shared a house, you know, with the screenwriter. So, I mean, I really was like Tom Cruise 24 hours a day, and he's annoyingly good at everything, but as a director, that's a great asset to have in a star. We had a sequence where I wanted to land an airplane at night on a remote dirt airstrip in, in South America, lit only by a pickup truck's headlights, which is something that the real Barry Seal would do. And next thing we know, we see the headlights of the pickup truck turn off because the producers thought we were done. Oh, you're kidding. Because they were at the other end of the airstrip. So everyone's going home. We're like, wait a second. We're still in the air. <laughs> and we actually now need that pickup truck because we need to light the airstrip so Tom can land the airplane. And so, and it's, it's in the movie. It's, you know, I'm sure people think that can't, that's not, that must be a stunt double. <laughs> right. Because it's so dark in the airplane. And, and Tom is just... He, he literally landed the airplane at night at a remote airstrip, with trees all around it, just lit by one pickup truck. 1,500 kilos. That's 15. 1,500 kilos, Barry. In one go. Get it done. Turns out co-star Sarah Wright's mom lives in Arizona, and Sarah admits she comes to a Harkins whenever she's in town. Now, she plays Tom Cruise's wife in the movie, and as you can imagine, with any marriage, there's intimacy involved, but as she explained, it's not all fun and games, even if Tom Cruise is a part of it all. It was hilarious, and there was a moment where we were doing this scene in a car. Tom's legs needed to be outside the car, but my legs were sort of like up in the air, and my foot was needing to hit this garage door opener to make the garage door opener go up and down from the outside, because it's like, it's funny, you know? I'm laying on this car, and for me to put my legs up and him to have his legs out, we're not even able to touch inside of it. So basically, he's shaking the car, I'm shaking it, hitting this thing, and I was like, this is how I always pictured it. <laughs> this moment in a scene with you, this is hilarious. Tom did all of his own flying in this movie and did an amazing job. However, there was one scene where Tom was not in the cockpit. Woo! How low was that plane, really? Incredibly, like 10 feet over my head. Was that really Tom flying it? No, I think, because that's not about Tom's insurance, that's about my insurance. Right. I'm not sure they will let Tom do that just for my sake. Um, no, I, I don't know who, who, who was flying the plane, but whoever it was, I trusted him. It, it, was, it was mad. We did that like, we did that like eight times. Coming up on Real Travels. Oh my <laughs> God, what are you doing here? Did they send you? Yep, we sure did. An Arizona Oscar winner is surprised when her former acting coach takes my place to interview her for Battle of the Sexes. And remember when you had to eat before you came to a movie theater? Well, at Harkins, you've got plenty to choose from, and I involve an old friend in the tasting process. But Brad! There, I'm right over here. There's, there's more. What? For just no. 10 <laughs> For the past 84 years, Harkins Theaters has redefined what it means to go and see a movie. Founded by Dwight Red Harkins in 1933, Harkins Theaters operates over 500 screens in five states based here in Arizona. Not only does Harkins Theaters provide us the ultimate movie-going experience, they've raised the bar when it comes to charitable giving, helping raise millions over the years. Thank you, Harkins Theaters, especially for that award-winning popcorn. And happy anniversary. We'll see you at the movies. Welcome back to Real Travels with Tara. We are here inside a Harkins Theater out at Camel View. Um, I have to tell you, the Harkins chairs here, I don't know what they are putting in these cushions. But these chairs are probably some of the best I've ever been in, and not just in a movie theater in general. Um, our next film this weekend is Victoria and Abdul, Oscar winner Judy Dench, back in a role that she could probably do in her sleep. Now, I had a chance to head to Toronto and interview the cast. Uh, this is Harrison Berger. He's not a part of the film, uh, but he is a film student, just graduated from ASU, helping with our show. What would you do if Oscar winner Judy Dench decided, you know what, I need to cut down the number of interviews I'm doing, and she gave you the axe? I think I'd be devastated. I was kind of devastated. That's exactly what happened to me in Toronto. However, I did talk to her co-star, a well-loved Indian actor who earned the coveted role of Abdul in Victoria and Abdul. You will present the Queen with a ceremonial coin. He arrived in India back in 1887 to present Queen Victoria with a ceremonial medal. He ended up becoming an advisor, teacher, and friend. You are known for having a talent humanizing the royals. What yes. is the trick to that? 
Is it hard to do? Hi, uh, Judy Dench, or hi, uh, Helen Mirren. <laughs> they do it for you. I will not have this. Judy Dench, she just can do this in her sleep. I don't know anyone who's better. But you know, that's the best part, that she can do it in her sleep, and yet she's always, like, reinventing herself. Whatever you do, you must not look at Her Majesty. Were you afraid to look her in the eye when you first met her, just like you're not supposed to look the queen in the eye ever? I think I couldn't stop looking at her. <laughs> and it was always embarrassing. I remember right. the first time we met at lunch, and I looked at those eyes, she, her eyes. They're just so, you know, you just get lost in it. Mother. You're spying on me. Talk about mommy-son issues. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of um, tumultuousness in this relationship. Was there anything positive, anything good? Between the two of them? Yeah. Only on her deathbed. Her deathbed, half an hour maybe, she called for him. She did call for the Munchie, Abdul Karim, who this relationship is, the film is about, but she did call for him, and I think they connected for, say, half an hour over his life, of, over 60 years of life between them, only half an hour, where she probably thought, I'm sorry that I've been holding on to this, this thing for so long, and he thought, this is a waste. We wasted everything. And that was it. I am cantankerous. Greedy, fat. We know that she had the nine children, that she didn't get to really have much relationship with any of them. And she had so many grandchildren, great grandchildren. Um, but I think it's, I think the, the attraction of, of this whole episode of her life was to see that there was a very, very strong, beating, passionate heart in her. I am Queen of England. <laughs> of India. Abdul has risen on his own merits. Now, he is my friend. I haven't been as happy as this for years. Victoria and Abdul in theaters this weekend, again, based around a uh, very unlikely friendship. Speaking of unlikely relationships and friendships, let me bring in a buddy, a friend of mine that I worked with for years, Brad Perry. We had kind of an interesting oh, friendship. I, is that what we're calling it, interesting? Yeah, we're calling it well, tumultuous at times. New words. New, New words. <laughs> we're using big New words on that one. You look so, great. Thank you. Back in the Valley of the Sun. Yes. You love movies like I love oh, movies. Man, that's I love going. Are you impressed by the food options that they have here at Harkins? Because I am over impressed. Let me show you. This is what I usually get. This is their cheese plate, and it comes with figs and it comes mm. with mustard. This is my plate, Brad. What, what do I get to have? Well, then? you've got a lot of options right here. All right. Hummus platter. Ooh. The charcuterie plate. I like or that. Or would you like to start with one of the flatbreads? They've got five flatbreads. Wait, hey, Brad, but you, you gotta pay you gotta pace yourself. Why? Should I wait till you finish a bite before giving you another bite? No, because I want some more. What else <laughs> they got? Would you like a Danish? Yeah, I love Several house-made Danishes to pick from. Would you like the cherry or would you like the apple? Apple. Okay. And I'll See? I, you know what? And I'll be polite. Brought my own fork. Aww. But I didn't do it for that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So, this, is all the, this is all so good. Brad, what? there's more. There is. Wow, for $10, you can get your hands on one of the big party popcorns. I love Harkins popcorn. Yeah. But I can't take it on the plane with me, or can I? Mm, you tell me. I am now. For $10, you can get some of the big party popcorn. You can feed at least 10 people for 10 bucks. And you can find it on HarkinsTheaters.com or you can come to a Harkins Theater and get it in person and you can entertain your friends and watch movies at your house but bring a taste of Harkins with you. And I love the pop -a meter on the back. You know why? Because there's plenty more where that came what? from. What? I'm not, I'm not done. Well, there's more? There's more. What? The loyalty cup. Do you have one of these? I sure do. Well, guess what? Get ready to add the next one because on November 9th, the 2018 Loyalty Cup hits Harkins Theaters. You might recall that I gave a certain Wonder Woman one of these, and here was her reaction to being the newest owner of a Loyalty Cup. This is the Harkins Loyalty Cup, and I ha I'm sorry you're not on it, oh, but good. you are, and you are yeah. class president. So that's for you. Oh, wow. You go free to get that. discounts on soft drinks. The class. <laughs> Perfect. So, with the loyalty cup, you can get refills as often as you want. $1.50, that's it. Don't forget, get your hands on the 2017 one now, but the 2018 ones in just a few weeks. Today's a good day to die. I'm going next. Nobody is going next. It's too dangerous. If you've seen the 1990 Joel Schumacher film Flatliners, you might remember Julia Roberts was in that thing, Keeper Sutherland, Kevin Bacon. The story behind Flatliners might not be new. You know what is new? 
the heartbeat. Thank you, Nick G. One of the signature drinks here at the Verite Lounge at Harkins Camelview. This one features, I sent some Patron tequila, a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of cream. You know, I don't even care. I gotta be honest, this thing is really good. <laughs> And I'm not a huge drink person. This thing is really good. Again, you can find the heartbeat right here at the Verite Lounge. They do a great job of kind of concocting some signature drinks depending on what movies are opening in their theaters. In the meantime, when we come back, we're talking to the cast of the new Flatliners. I'm nationally known comedian Pablo Francisco. And since this is a movie show, I'm using my movie voice. Real Travels with Tara is brought to you by Harkins Theaters, Dignity Health, Sneaky Big Studios, and National Bank of Arizona. Midnight Basement Sublevel C. What's going on? I would like you to stop my heart. You give it one minute and then you bring me back. Who doesn't contemplate what happens after we die at some point? And, you know, presenting this kind of relatively believable, tangible means of figuring that out is um, a, very compelling to me, at least. Relax. Enjoy the experience. Could you all relax and enjoy the experience if someone said we're gonna stop your heart? Just to relax and enjoy the experience? I don't. I uh, doubt it. I certainly yeah. doubt it. Yeah. yeah. It's like her brain's been rewired. I'm going next. Would you be the first one to try it, or would you wait till about five, six people did it, and then you might give it a go? Yeah. The, the, that sounds the like a better time. plan. Yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. Charging 200. It's a good day to die. Clear? Basically, your character talks them into doing this. What's the worst thing a friend of yours has talked you into doing? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um... I think my sister told me once to like, uh, she had a rope in between her hands and I had a knife and I did this and I went straight through her oh. kneecap. That was pretty bad, oh, yeah. Shit. I don't think she ever forgave me. I, I'd like to think she persuaded me. I think maybe it was my idea. I feel like once a friend, I was shooting a movie in Portugal and she was like, let's go for a walk in this field. And I was like, mm. And then um, all these like bulls started running at us and it was one of the scariest <laughs> moments of my life. I straight terrifying. up thought I was gonna die, but I didn't. I think I'm more so the one that's like telling people to do stuff and totally. I just watch on the side. Running. I was like, what is Kiersey told me to do. Uh, she had me get on a fair ride the other day. Yeah, that was After I just fun. had fried Oreos, and yeah. then I was like, that's a good one, that's <laughs> enough rides. Did you see a white light? It was more like pure energy. But what do you think happens? I don't have a theory. In a way, I feel after this movie that there, we have, a bit like Kiefer says in the film, we have a responsibility to just leave that door closed because, uh, you know, it's something which we're clearly not meant to know, and so maybe speculating is fine, but trying to know is not. I've always visualized that we actually do see people who have maybe gone before us. I have not visualized that some people we might have wronged come back to haunt us. Yeah, we hope that whatever is after uh, is not like ours, because ours <laughs> is dark as hell. <laughs> I like a field, maybe without bulls, maybe a pretty field. Totally. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. A port, you know, a field in Portugal. Yeah, <laughs> afternoon golden light. Without the bulls. Yeah. Or the friend who invited her to go in the field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was my fault. Let's be honest, the idea of stopping your heart, starting your heart just to experience what death is like, not the best idea. You know what is a great idea? Seeing a classic film on a Tuesday for $5 at a Harkins Theater, the way films were meant to be seen. You can rent Love Actually. That's one of my favorite holiday films, but why not see it on the big screen in a Harkins Theater. If you go to HarkinsTheaters.com and click on the Tuesday Night Classic, you'll find the list of all of the films that they're showcasing, and they theme it out. So we've got some great scary ones just in time for Halloween, and then it is all family and fun as we gear up for the holidays. And it just so happens that they always tend to know what my favorites are. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Love Actually, Tuesday Night Classics, the best deal in town. Oh my God, what are you doing here? Oh my you? God, this is so fun. What are you gonna ask me about? That's Arizona's own Emma Stone, and across from her, her good friend and former acting coach from Valley Youth Theater, Bob Cooper, who knew 
that a grown man could get so nervous interviewing somebody he's known since she was 11 years old. Oh, it was, uh, uh, it wasn't really nervous about her. It was right. just the opportunity to be a reporter because normally I'm being interviewed, not the person interviewing. So I was terrified. Four to five minutes flies by, am I right? Absolutely, it seemed like seconds, not four to five minutes. Do you feel good about the interview? I, I do, I, I, I think it was okay. I, I don't know if I would be hired as a reporter, but I, <laughs> I think it was fine. You know what, Bob, we'll be the judge of that. Okay. Here's how it all went down. These are my notes, um, my questions for her. Now this, I'm usually on the other side. I'm the one being interviewed, so this is the first time I'm going to be the interviewer. So I have, I'm very nervous, obviously, and I've put some notes down here, and they'll probably just go south once I start. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my God, what are you doing here? Did they send you? Yes. Hi. Oh my you? God, this is so fun. Can you believe it? No. What are you going to ask me about? Uh, Emma. Yes. Uh, Emily, to Emily, you, please. Emily, thank you. Okay, thank you. Let's, be, let's, let's be real here. Let's be real here. Emily, mm -hmm. I love seeing your blonde hair again, by the way. Thank you very much. But it's much blonder than it used to be. Is it? Well, no, it's well, perfect. Well, thanks. I would like to ask you what was it like to meet? Billie Jean King, such an iconic sports figure and activist and person. It was um, incredibly nerve wracking. I think for both of us, what she had told me very recently, but I had to go to her apartment and I knew I was playing her and it was like, I've never played a real person before, as you know. <laughs> so it was, um, and to play someone like her who had the, there was something kind of nice that I didn't grow up during the era of the Battle of the Sexes, so I didn't have this like larger than life, crazy intense pressure on my shoulders. That only happened as I learned more and more about her. Keep talking, Bobby. The more nonsense you spell, the worse it's gonna be when you lose. She realized that so young, that she was a truly a social activist that happened to be great at tennis. And so she was gonna use this thing that she was really good at as a vehicle for change in the world. I think I'm still coming into that. I think I'm still, beginning to understand that as I move into adulthood because I was just so obsessed with acting. and I've expanded more as I've gotten older and understood how important it is to, to do as much as we can to affect positive change in the world beyond just, you know, bringing hopefully joy to people in some ways or entertain people. What best piece of advice could you give young people out there um, in no matter what what they're doing, whether it's sports, it's theater, it's being a, a scientist, a, a doctor, an attorney. It always feels cliche to say never give up. I think that that's very true though. And I think if you can find one person who you feel really believes in what you do and really cares about what it is you wanna do, then you're, you're golden. If you've got one person on your side, you're, you're in business, but even if you don't, I keep pushing forward. <laughs> Best interview of the day. Best interview of the day. There you should go. come on every junket. I may be out of a job. I know. I'll join you. Sign me up. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Thank you. Um, so Battle of the Sex has actually opened exclusively right here at Harkins Campbellview. In fact, before it even opened in other parts of the country. If you haven't seen it yet, you might want to head to Harkins. Of course, you can go to HarkinsTheaters.com and get your tickets online. I hope you enjoyed our first episode of Real Travels with Tara. Big shout out to the folks at Harkins and specifically all the employees here at the Camelview location who I think, I think had to clean up after uh, the big mess that we made with all of the food. Hey, don't forget to go to HarkinsTheaters.com. You can find all of your movie news, promotions, giveaways, my extended interviews on behind the screens, exclusive to Harkins Theaters and everything you need to know about popcorn. I should also mention all the community service Harkins does. They have raised millions of dollars over the years for different causes throughout the Valley. If you've got a fundraiser coming up, if you've got a school project coming up, just go to HarkinsTheaters.com. Chances are they're gonna help you out. Coming up next week on Real Travels with Tara, Kate Winslet, Idris Elba have only each other to rely on after they survive a plane crash. We'll talk about their new film, The Mountain Between Us. Somehow I end up in the Catskills on a Bear Grylls survival mission to promote this film. I'll have some highlights from that. Let's just say I ate a scorpion. And Ryan Gosling, Ryan Gosling, and more Ryan Gosling. If you loved him in La La Land, he's back in Blade Runner 2049 with Harrison Ford. All that and much more on next week's edition. In the meantime, grab some popcorn, take it with you. I'm gonna take this with me. We'll see you at the movies. Our
Perkins employee in a suit sure can throw. <laughs> <laughs> yup. <Ow. laughs>